Roll a stern. Roll a stern. Back us up. All right, Captain. This is my R21 Ranger Classic. I may be known for making tons of airplanes and flying things, but since I was a child, I always remembered being fascinated by boats. Wait, I actually think I'm remembering something. Story time. It was time for family vacation. I was at the pool at the Holiday Inn, and I was playing with my newly constructed boat. She was a fine vessel, made of 164 birch ply, super glue, and horrid brush motors for my failed airplanes. With these materials combined, I made a child's interpretation of a working boat. So there I was, motoring across the pool when my grandpa said, When are you gonna grow up and stop playing with toy boats? It was at this moment, I knew I needed a larger boat. Well, today's the date. I still have more toy boats. So it turns out I actually haven't really grown up. But I do need to find a larger vessel because now that I've had a full-size boat, which we worked on last year, it turns out that boat is actually not that good for a lot of projects. There's so much room in here, it's so comfortable to hold. So at the complaints of my crew, I'm looking for a newer, faster, bigger vessel. Hopefully not too fast, too big, because I don't got that kind of money. For someone who's kind of a beginner into boats, looking around for boats is probably the worst bit of this experience. Scroll paralysis, which is this, is probably a real thing. I've never been through so many sites and dead ends when trying to find a suitable boat. Steel hull tug? That's not really a tug hull, I wouldn't think. It's more like a trawler. It turns out boats kind of suck for trying to do everything all in one. Size is a huge factor. Too small, and what's the point of buying the boat to begin with? This is a crappy little electric boat that moves at like five knots. This dude wants 74 G's for this boat. Too big, and well, it's got more space, but it needs a bigger tow vehicle. 30 feet long? Oh, the beam on that thing's gotta be not towable. And then everything's too expensive. And more importantly for me, fuel economy. The bigger the boat is and the faster it goes, the more dollar signs you basically throw out of the boat and into the water. Because boats are probably one of the worst things that you can probably spend fuel on. I eventually settled on a style of boat referred to as a pilot house boat. I specifically wanted utility as the boat is to help with creating future videos on the water. So deck space is a must for me because I need to be able to hold all the crap that we're gonna be taking out. Honestly, this boat's probably gonna be a big thing for the channel because I'm gonna be doing things on the boat. So we need to find something with cover space and plenty of deck area to hold junk. Continuing to scroll till my eyes bled, I looked at Parker's, Eastern boats, Atlas boats, 40 years, an assortment of lobster boats, as these look like they might do what I need them to do. But then, I found this. A Ranger R21. It looks absolutely ridiculous. Is this a toy? Oh, it's an actual boat you can buy. It's 21 feet long. It's got a little diesel inboard, a three-cylinder, sometimes a Yanmar, sometimes a Volvo. And I found that completely fascinating, and I just had to go take a look at it. Needless to say, my impulses immediately kicked in, so I handed the buyer a huge wad of cash and drove home with a boat in tow. Despite the boat being fairly clean in the photos, when I got to it, it was a little bit dirty in some areas and there was a little bit of cosmetic damage. Fortunately, I actually got to look at the logs and I found out that one of the previous owners that took the boat from 200 hours all the way to almost 2000 hours did a very good job of mechanically keeping up with the boat. Almost all the old changes were there, so I have really nothing to worry about as far as mechanical issues go. The first thing I'm gonna do is repair all these dings and cracks in the gel coat and fiberglass because nobody likes an ugly boat. Total Boat is the total best because they sent me all of this junk that we're going to use to repair this boat. They've got fiberglass fillers, paint, epoxy, and whatever you can think of. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna repair all these kind of like voids in the gel coat because I think this is an imperfection from when the boat was actually made. There's a little bit of air pox and there's some cracking in the gel coat that I noticed. So we're gonna repair all that stuff around the boat. Now that all the voids are filled with epoxy polyester, it's time to put some Total Boat primer on it and then Total Boat wet edge paint. Honestly, I don't really like this bare gel coat on here because it stains very easily because this is just actually raw gel coat on the boat. I'm actually going to paint it because it makes it a little bit easier to clean and if something were to get on it that stains, I can just wipe it off. The bottom of the boat needs to be addressed because this is just a blade of paint on the bottom. It's kind of black, but it's wearing off in a lot of space. I'm not sure how often this thing actually really got painted or touched up, but it's time for new a blade of paint. So this boat's pretty cool. It has a lot of brass and bronze parts and shiny boats are the best, except for maintaining. So we're gonna strip all this stuff out, rub this thing down, got our little portholes nice and shiny, clean the prop, install the prop. We are ready for the water. 
one thing I really want is some kind of cover because on these boats, I have seen them sold with options for like a soft top bimini, but I'm not gonna spend that kind of money. I've got plywood, I've got hands. So we're gonna bend some of these strips to keep this crown at the top of the boat. So I wanna glue these on these strips together to hold this position. We're gonna put this marine grade plywood on top, sand it, put some epoxy on it, fiberglass, paint it, and boom, now we have a hard top bimini. Trying to relaunch the boat and actually get some experience using this thing. Episode of Deadliest Catch. We catch the dreaded land shark. It's not putting out much of a fight. beautiful island. Just kidding. I can't afford land. What I can't afford is an established titles plot of land. This video brought to you by established titles. It is true. I am now a lord in Scotland. Although my plot of land is only one square foot across, they plant a tree for every order. Based on a historic Scottish ownership custom where landowners have been long referred to as Lord, Established Titles has hooked me up with my newfound powers to place the prefix Lord on most of my fancy documents, such as my credit cards and even my deserted dating profile. My certificate comes with a plot number that you can look up and see exactly where the plot of land is physically located. These titles make a great gift that's unique and there's only a limited amount of land in the world. And you can grant yourself, friends and family, the ability to own land in Scotland and make the landscape a little bit more green when they plant a tree. And Established Tiles works with global charities such as One Tree Planet and Trees for the Future to help with future reforestation efforts. The certificate you get makes a great conversational piece and it even looks great on my wall at home. Established Titles has told me that the first 200 people to use my code TRIPLE10 can even get a plot of land next to mine so we can start our own little kingdom in Scotland for all of eternity. If you're looking for a last minute gift for any occasion, Established Titles is even running a special for the holidays. And if you use the code TRIPLE10, you can get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash TRIPLE10 to claim your offer and to help support the channel. Welcome to our Ranger R21 Tugboat. So let's walk around the boat and let me show you all of its features. Over here, what I wish I had, which is an electronic windlass, but unfortunately I do not have that. So I have to reel in the anchor myself, 50 feet and the anchor road and chain. What are these called again, Sam? Portholes? Portholes, yeah. Shiny, it was shiny like a week ago. We cleaned these portholes and the salt water did a number on them in no time. So that looks terrible. This is an R21 classic but it's like the classic with the wood windows. I kind of wanted the rounder, more modern ones, but this is what I found. It's pretty cool. The wood is in great shape. Another addition we made was the inclusion of a hard top, but I really wanted to hang stuff on it and I wanted a place to put my fishing poles and whatever we're gonna do on the boat. It's made out of birch ply, it's marine grade plywood, and that took quite a bit of time to make. The hard top is also coated in total boat epoxy. Over here, we have a swim platform. Clean it up and use some more total boat something, I forget what it's called, I'll put the people right here. And those are a video we're currently working on. You might have already seen it, but they're going out to sea. I should probably get those thing on. Over here, we have the wet exhaust. What a wet exhaust is, for those of you who aren't familiar with boats, is that seawater is basically used to cool the engine, but it's first mixed with the exhaust gases to make the engine exhaust nice and cool, and then it's blown over the side of the boat. It also really quiets down the sound, so it's less annoying for people around us. Up here, some things have changed. I've added a boat radar for radaring at night because I don't want to run the things. And also it's kind of cool. I just want more gadgets to play with on the boat. So that's a new addition. 
I also cut the mast down because sometimes I need to get under a bridge like over there. So with this system, all I do is I do the front two clasps and I fold the mast down and it trailers in like no time at all. So the boat's name, St. Brendan, it actually came with the name because the previous owner took it from 200 hours all the way to like 1,800 hours, which is crazy. He apparently took it from Hall Over Inlet, which is famous for beating the crap out of boats. And he drove it all the way from there, all the way to the Bahamas, which is nuts. Like that's like 50 something miles of open ocean. So the boat has a really cool history and I'm also slightly superstitious. And it's generally a bad idea to rename a boat once it's been named. So I'm not going to bother renaming the boat. It's also registered on the AIS as St. Brandon. So it just makes things a whole lot easier in case it starts sinking and someone needs to find me. Down here, we have the bow thruster. This sucks in water and shoots it out one side either to the port side or the starboard side. And this helps get the bow one way or another. It's kind of like cheating because backing up a straight in board is actually fairly difficult because you kind of have to think about it when you're doing things. There's, such, there's things such as prop fall. And that's all that comes to mind right now because I'm a new captain. But I haven't ran into anything just yet and it's fairly easy once you get used to the quirks of backing up and inboard with the rudder behind it. And this is the helm of the boat. It's where we drive the boat. So down here we have a, a slight V-berth. I mean, it says sleeping for two. Didn't really come with any cushions for that. Supposedly you can sleep in there, but I use it as a storage locker for all of our gears for daily activities. This is completely extra, but this is something the owner installed, which is pretty cool. It's a big ship's wheel. It's very, very extra. And it was shiny at once because I polished it, but the seawater quickly made quick work of that because my hands are all salty. And I added the most important feature of all, cup holders. And over here, we have the heart of the boat. This is a Yanmar 3GM30F. It is a Japanese three-cylinder diesel engine. And it's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen on a boat because I haven't seen that many boats. It's a raw water-cooled Yanmar diesel engine. It's been working flawlessly so far. I've only had to tighten up the belts a little bit, changed a few plastic pieces here and there that have just been wear items. I've added a few things, such as a mixing elbow alarm, because in case the water pump fails, which is critical for the engine to operate, this will overheat and then it will send me a signal letting me know that it's overheating. But I also have a flow meter, which is like the first thing that happens is the flow will stop if the impeller fails or if the water pickup strainer at the bottom gets clogged. This will send an alarm so I can stop the engine and save the boat. So when I do this, it's ear piercingly loud and it lets me know that the water pump is no longer circulating so the engine will overheat and die if the water pump breaks. They switched the EC models in the later years, but unfortunately they stopped production in I think 2016. So these boats are somewhat of a rarity to see nowadays. And this style of boat is referred to as a displacement hull, meaning the water moves around it. It's very, very efficient at slow speeds, meaning about five to seven knots, and it cannot go any faster. If you try to make a displacement hull go any faster, all it does is dig a hole because a displacement hull is shaped like an airfoil for a very, very smooth laminar flow of water, but it's like an upside down airfoil. So if you try to make it go faster, it sucks itself deeper into the water, just making all this huge wake and going absolutely nowhere. Those are the cool features of the boat, but I should mention the RC parts of the boat because it's something very unique for this boat. <laughs> <laughs> that I made it specifically for RC. It's radio control. I'm gonna stick my hand in it. That's safe. <laughs> it's honestly pretty noisy. That's loud. That's pretty loud too. This boat did come with a reliable diesel motor, but I really wanted the ability to troll very, very slowly when I'm out at sea and not wanting to start the motor. So now I can really confuse people at the docks. <laughs> I interfaced these pulleys to these PLA gears and had a system that I could easily disable that turns the main prop for maximum efficiency. The one reason I designed it like this is because I didn't want the belt to grab and pull on the shaft too much, so I wanted to take the slack off because this boat does have these cutlass bearings and other boat nonsense that most people probably don't care about, but that's what I did. So basically what we have here, the drive shaft. I have a loose belt right now because I'm gonna show you how this works. But we have an HTD pulley down there to a, a smaller HTD pulley up here for gear reduction. Then a giant big old gear here and then a smaller gear here because I want more reduction because that's a big propeller down there. I think it's like 14 inches in diameter. That's how this works is I turn this screw, I tension. I back off screw, I get no tension. I can also 
untension the motor here using this turnbuckle with these welded eyelets because they don't make the appropriate size of Harbor Freight. This is what they got. So that can all be disconnected there. So I can actually disconnect from two places while I'm running. He's definitely trying to turn and it's not letting him. Servo drive is off. Servo drive is oh, off. Oh, you turned it off. I was like, why aren't we turning? When I'm driving the boat with a diesel engine, I don't want this thing interfering with my drive line. So I'll probably end up slacking the screw just a little bit, just so it's very light. Just so there's a whole, not a whole lot of tension on this. Or I could completely undo the screw, drop the plate, slip the belt out, and the belt simply just flops around down there. It doesn't touch anything. So there's no additional wear or any drag on that shaft at all. So I get the best fuel efficiency when using the diesel engine. The system worked really well for moving around at three to four knots. For power, it uses a 48 volt, 2000 watt go-kart motor I got off of Amazon and four of these Battleborn batteries. These are fantastic LIFE PO4 batteries that came out of my tiny house. Now they're going in a super salty environment because they're Battleborn batteries. If you want to check out more about the Babylon batteries, I got a link down in the description below. But these are fantastic batteries because they run the go-kart motor for a very, very, very long time because it only pulls maybe around three to four amps at the speed I run it at. So there's four of these in here because it needs 48 volts to run this go-kart controller. In here, you see the very, very ghetto throttle control system. This is the control for the motor. It is interfaced with this RC servo. The servo pulls the cable to move it. So I can use the RC to manipulate the throttle or I can just turn the throttle by my hand. To reverse it, press the little dip switch, and then you move the throttle. And then it goes backwards. Pretty simple. Over here, we have the RC control. I've actually rigged this thing up so I can drive from the very front of the boat from the bow if I wanted to go forward or motor left or right for unsetting the anchor by myself, which is a really neat addition. I also have control over the bow thruster with RC control. <laughs> For steering, I 3D printed this giant ring gear that I screwed into the back of the cool steering wheel that I have in this boat, attached that to a 360 degree servo, and even put a smaller servo to activate the bow thruster. It's pretty great when I'm alone because I can completely maneuver and control this boat fairly slowly. I wouldn't really use it to necessarily dock because moving the rudder from port to starboard is extremely time consuming and slow, and the electric motor doesn't really have enough power to really stop this boat when it's moving at a fairly high rate of speed. This lets me keep an eye on the water pump for the engine so I can see the water coming out and drive the boat. The only real other issue too is the PLA gears that I made down here get kind of soft. So these gears are a little bit of a bad idea because inside this engine locker, it gets very, very hot. This whole motor just bakes this thing. And it's got these tiny little air vents that don't do anything. So the gears actually get a little soft if the boat's running. So I have to wait for it to cool down and then I can use them because PLA doesn't take very much to melt. Now, fortunately, the teeth have been fine on this thing that I printed. They've been actually strong enough to survive this because I ran it for quite a few miles for just about an hour at just slow idles to see what it would do and if anything would fail. So that's something I'll maybe have to address, but they are plenty strong enough when they're cold and they don't, they don't break teeth at all. And I've got to get a little better, closer look of what's in the water, but I still have to drive the, the boat. This has been a very, very fun experience trying something big that's boat related. She definitely checks the boxes for a lot of usable projects. I just really, really wish this boat was a little bit faster. Maybe I'm not actually done shopping for a boat. The one thing I can't really complain about is the small fuel burn. It only burns a third of a gallon of diesel per hour, which is actually insanely efficient because that's like five or six miles to a gallon, which is really good for a boat. Boats are usually horrible when it comes to gasoline. But let me know what you guys want to see because I got a lot of projects planned for this boat. If someone wants to buy it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not sure I want to sell the boat just yet. Not in this economy. I'm trying to expand my nautical knowledge. If any of you audience members out there are like into boats or have your own like big trawler, I'm kind of thinking about future YouTube me. Maybe we move all of my equipment onto a very big steel boat and then make YouTube videos at sea. But first, I kind of need to gain more experience on the open ocean. I don't have a captain's license. Uh, how do you even get one of those? Anyways, like the offer for like me is like, if you have a boat, maybe I'll buy you fuel in exchange for nautical knowledge. Because um, I know about airplanes, but I don't know a whole lot about boats. So if this offer is kind of cool to you for free diesel fuel for your boat, reach out at my business email here. I forget the actual URL and I look forward to hearing from you.